The Holocaust is living history. It is the story of 11 million people, 6 million Jews and 5 million non-Jews who died in that terrible era. I am a Holocaust survivor and very important that I let all the students in Nevada know what was the Holocaust all about. From studying the Holocaust, we found how low society can sink and how brutal we can be to our fellow man. Young people today have the ability to find out what really happened and to know, hey, it can never happen again. If more people would have helped, then we could have made a difference. Even one person can make a difference in other people's lives. And since those who perished there left no children behind, you are the spiritual heirs, and you must know of the greatness of the legacy that was left to you. I'm Gwen Clancy for the Nevada Department of Cultural Affairs. Today, we'll be looking at Europe, Europe of 1930s and 40s, Hitler's Europe, a time when he was waging a campaign of death and destruction. Our students are studying this because they want to learn from the past, but also to learn how to make decisions that will help shape a better world for all of us. Hitler believed in racial purity and blamed the groups he hated for all of Germany's problems. Homes and stores were vandalized. The University of Berlin In Nevada, we teach Holocaust studies in middle school and in high school so that present generations, future generations will understand that there is a dark side to humanity, that people can do terrible, terrible things. It's important that we provide the information and the history to our children so that when they grow up, these things will not happen. Martha Gould is a member of the Governor's Advisory Council on Education Relating to the Holocaust. This council was established by Nevada Law in 1989 to educate teachers, students, and the community about the Holocaust and ongoing intolerance in the world. The former director of the Washoe County Library has a very personal connection with the mission of the council. I can remember as a young teenager when my mother learned that her entire family and the village where they had, where she was born disappeared during the war. We don't know where the family went. They could have gone to Auschwitz. They may have gone to Bergen-Belsen, Treblinka. We don't know. We only know that the village is gone and the family is gone. And therefore, I lost a heritage that I never had a chance to know. Looking at this map, Martha, that was made in Germany, could have been hanging on Hitler's wall for all we know. True. What is it about these artifacts? There's, there's the badges. Because, because it tells you it really happened. Looking at these artifacts, at the photographs, looking at these badges that people have to, had to wear. I mean, this stands for a Belgian homosexual. That is a French Jew. That is a German Jew. This was what people from Poland wore when they were sent to the uh, labor camps. Um, and this photograph here, I mean, they were put in cattle cars with no water, no food, one small little bucket to take care of sanitary needs. They were treated as animals. Look at these children over here. These are pictures of young people Like, you know, young people today, only they never had a chance to grow up. They ended up in the death camps. They ended up in the gas chambers. It would be nice if we could forget and say, you know, it didn't happen, and let's go on and have fun and living. That's not what life is about. Yes, we should enjoy, but in the meantime, we must remember and pass on the memories, memories of good, but there are also bad memories of society. And it's going on around the globe. And we have to be conscious of other people's holocausts and other people's sorrows, the living and the dead. Yes. Every year, the Governor's Council on Education Relating to the Holocaust holds conferences in Reno and Las Vegas, 
where students hear firsthand from survivors. I find it amazing that the survivors of the Holocaust can come up here and talk to us young people about their experiences. A lot of them hid their story from us for a long time. They hid. They kept everything secret because they were ashamed, they were scared, and I find it amazing that they were compassionate and compelled to come up here and educate us. What I talk about the most is love, tolerance, no prejudice, and please stay away from hate groups. All hate groups make evil, and evil is death. That's what I learned in my year in concentration camp. The Venetian Hotel and Casino hosted the conference in Las Vegas, where Holocaust survivor and author Gerda Weissman Klein gave the keynote address to the students. You, my dear friends, are the messengers to a time I shall not see. Your teachers have shown to you a time which perhaps might be ancient history. Yet I hope that it will inspire you to understand the greatness of the moment which you share, the life which you are privileged to live in freedom, the things which are yours to keep and to carry forward for all generations to come. I know that many of you are familiar with my story. Your teachers have been kind enough to expose you to my books and perhaps also to the films which have been done. But I feel that it is in a personal way that I should like to address you today, not the grandmother which I am today, but the young girl of your age that I was when it happened to me. I was 15 years old in the autumn of 1939 when the world I loved and was a part of was irrevocably destroyed. Perhaps the best way to explain it is with a phenomena that you unfortunately are only too familiar. And I'm referring to the tsunami which one day, as you watched in horror on television, when this incredible huge wave came from an angry sea on a beautiful day and washed away fathers and mothers and children and homes and their lives were new and loved. This is precisely what happened to us in Europe, not in one day, but in retrospect now it seems almost that it was. From a protected and simple childhood, I had an older brother. He had two dogs and I had cats. And I loved skiing in winter and swimming in summer. And I thought my life will go on like that forever. And then on a sunny day, September 3rd, 1939, a wave of hatred swept over Europe and swept away my beloved parents, my only brother, my uncles, my aunts, my cousins, my childhood home, and everything I held dear. And suddenly I found myself on a desolate beach of loneliness and horror, and nobody was there. <laughs> 